or back in, back in. Back in. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking ahead. So we'll see you guys next Thursday. <laughs> we are back in session. It's 7:15, May 27th, uh, 22nd, 2017. We'll continue with our RTM budget session. Will the clerk please take the roll? Representative Adams. Here. Bailey. Here. Baker. Here. Burrell. Here. Bauer. Here. Burgos. Casper. Here. Dean Shinbrot. Here. Evans. Here. Frickman. Here. Garcia. Gilly. Here. Hubbard. Kent. Here. Longino. Laughlin. Marr. Marley. Massett, Here. McCabe, Here. McDermott, Here. Merritt, Here. Nault, Here. Nugent, Here. Obrey, Here. Parker, Here. Pasqualini, Here. Powers, Here. Quinn, Sleeker Hassant, Here. Steinford, Here. Irma Streeter, Here. Jim Streeter, Here. Swindell, Wagner, Watrous, Here. Wells, Here. Williams, Wilson, Here. Newsom. Here. 38 roll. How many? 30. 30 members? 30 members. Present. We have 30 members. I declare a quorum. <coughs> Representatives Marr and Hubbard both said they would not be here tonight. If the body will indulge me before we start voting, I just want to go over the procedure for one thing reconsideration there's been some question about reconsidering votes that we have taken in the past reconsideration is allowed by Robert's rules of order in the event that the body thinks that there's new information or that they've made a mistake in voting the procedure and it's a not an easy one to uh, you need a divining rod to kind of go through this book and, and you know figure everything out but basically the way the reconsideration works is uh, it requires a two-thirds vote so a two-thirds vote to reconsider, let's say tonight, and I'm using this completely as an example because I happen to have been too lazy to erase the board. These are the numbers for the education budget. If somebody were to reconsider the education budget and it passed by two-thirds tonight, we would immediately stop anything that we were doing and we would immediately go back to this. Those numbers would be back on the board exactly as they stand as though we never took the vote at the previous meeting. So we would not be able to put additional numbers on. It goes back right to this condition, and we'd be back voting on 74900000 as an example. Now, if somebody were to give notice tonight, so if you look, read through this, and then you read through the, the charts that adjoin it, it takes... If you, if you notify somebody prior to the next meeting and when you're gonna, you say, I'm gonna reconsider this budget at the next meeting, then the motion to reconsider only requires a simple majority, right? So again, using this as an example, if you said, I intend to reconsider the education budget at our next Thursday meeting, then at that meeting, a motion to reconsider would only require 50 per, uh, a majority because there's been previous notification. Anything you wanna bring up tonight requires two thirds to approve because you're kind of springing it on the, on the committee. You haven't given them time to think about it. So they make the standard a little higher, right? But again, any budget, we would go back to what was on the floor just before we voted and take up debate from there. Are there any questions? Representative Massett? Mr. Moderator, it just for a point of clarification, um, under the section of um, whatever, redoing the vote, it says a two-thirds vote or the vote of a, of a majority of the entire membership of the voting body. Does that mean members present and voting or all 41 members, two thirds of all 41 members of this body? I think what you're looking at is, is a different section. The thing about reconsideration is there's different committees. There's standing committees like the RTM, 
the RTM is a standard committee, a standing committee. Um, and there could be conventions. And it, there are conventions, there's, there's subcommittees, there's reconsideration has different rules for different types of committees. The one that I'm looking at is this one here, reconsideration in standing and special committees, which applies to the RTM. And number three, it says requires two-thirds vote to adopt the motion to reconsider. Okay, I was reading section C, the motions to rescind um, or amend, and it is under the section on how to reconsider. But you're coming yeah. from? Is that, so is that, that under rescinding and amending? It's under, um, section B, how can a group change its mind under section B? I don't, I mean, it doesn't matter. I just need it. I just would like a clarification on when we speak about, um, the members of the body. Is it the entire body, everyone who was elected or just the members present and voting at this time? For reconsideration, it's two-thirds of the members who are present at the time the vote is taken. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. Representative Pascaline. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Another um, point of order. I, I believe that motion has to come from someone from the majority only. That's, Representative Pascaline is absolutely correct. The motion has to come from somebody who voted in favor in this example of that third number. Representative Wells. I'm a little cons I'm curious about this threshold of new information. What possible new information could be coming to us as the Well, I, I understand. So <laughs> it just seemed like there's a threshold if if and when new information. Allow me to read. The purpose of reconsidering a vote is to permit correction of hasty, ill advised, or erroneous action, or to take up take into account added information or a changed situation that has developed since the taking of the vote. Now, if somebody believes that upon uh, calculating what the mill rate would be, they said, you know, we, this is a bad idea. This is going to crush the town. You could consider that, um, that their vote was ill. They may have voted for it previously and then realized what, and they would consider their vote ill-advised. Um, so that's what, that's what Robert's rule says. I, I, Permit the correction of hasty, ill-advised, or erroneous action. If somebody thinks that, the, that their voting on a particular account was incorrect, um, that qualifies. But somebody who was in the prevailing side has to make that motion. That, that keeps the minority who, who lost the vote from continuously yes, making I, the that, motion. That, that I understand. I'm, I'm just, uh, just kind of a little, a little perplexed that, uh, you know, what do we know today that we didn't know at that time? Other than, you know, things happen outside this body. It's raining, it wasn't raining when, you know, when we took the vote. <laughs> if somebody changes their mind because they think they made a mistake, then that's sufficient. Thank you. Representative Streeter. Just a point of clarity, uh, Mr. Moderator. My wife and I were not here at the last meeting when the vote was taken for the education. If there is a motion for consideration, can we or can we not vote for reconsideration? If not, can we vote if the motion goes through and a new motion is brought aboard? It says, in standing committees, the motion to reconsider can be made by any member who did not vote on the losing side, including one who did not vote at all. Um, That's all I need, thank you. Any other questions? I'd like to rep uh, recognize Councilor Nault. I just have a question. It's on, it's on. It's on. Um, don't, doesn't the RTM have to have a two-thirds uh, majority vote to raise any number that we voted on? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So this, this, what we're talking about is just the motion to reconsider. And then we come back to here, obviously, these numbers were above the council approved numbers and they would require 
two thirds or anything that was above the council number. Yeah. Are there any questions on reconsideration? All right. Let's move into our accounts for tonight. Public safety. Yeah, we'll just go with emergency communications. Isn't it public safety? Yes. First account tonight is account 1014, emergency communications on page 109 of your budget book. This is a continuation of the uh, minutes from April 19th. Account for emergency communications 1014 was reviewed. Director of Emergency Communications Joe Sastry presented his request for the budgeted amount. He mentioned the fourth quarter transfer had been necessary. The chairman asked how the town council approved number would impact his operation. Mr. Sastry said that he did not have an answer to that question right now. Perhaps he would not fill that open position. There are currently 12 dispatchers, whereas he had 13 a few months ago. The chairman asked what 9-11 enhancements meant on page 112. That is money from the state for multiple services we provide beyond Groton by us. Representative Parker asked if we derive any money from our tower facilities. The financing plan was then reviewed item by item. The tower revenue accounts for lease fees, primarily from Verizon and AT&T, with some pro services provided to Fishers Island. Mr. Sastry mentioned that in 13 years, this was the first time he'd ever been asked that question. Representative asked, or Wilson asked about North Stonington revenue, which amounts to 1,700 calls or 3% of call volume, and would it cause the regional state $165,000 we received to go away because of staffing problems? Mr. Sastry said probably. The chairman commented that the $1,382,809 seemed reasonable considering the budget constraints this year. Mr. Sastry said that he would make it work. Representative Wilson suggested that maybe another fourth quarter transfer might be necessary. He also noted that they were very happy with last year's controversial new desk for that the RTM approved and said that he had received 50% reimbursement from the state for that. Representative Parker moved a number of 1382809, seconded by Representative Wilson. The number was approved unanimously. Motion to adjourn was made by the chairman and seconded by Representative Hubbard. Adjourned at 820. Sincerely, Bruce McDermott, the public safety chairman. So you, you read those into the meeting minutes yeah. last time when you did your yeah. first one, right? Okay, so. You can go ahead and like like to move a number of one million three hundred eighty two thousand eight hundred and nine dollars. Second. <clears throat> Motion's been moved and seconded for one million three hundred eighty two thousand eight hundred and nine dollars for account one oh one four. Emergency communications. Is there any uh, discussion on this account? Representative O'Brien. Since your meeting, did you get the answers on how much we get from the other entities that are giving us money? I'm not sure I understand. Didn't you just say something about you were wondering what we got from North Stonington and what we got from uh, the cable that? companies and et cetera? No, that's, that's a... That's not changed. It would possibly change if we had not enough dispatchers to handle their volume. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this account? Representative Massett. Um, this is for Mr. Sastry. Last year, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
I remember there was a meeting of the town council and you were there and part of the discussion was what it meant to your department um, to have to deal with the cuts that were made. And I remember you saying that um, the cut that was made last year would result in you losing a personnel person, or not a personnel person, but a person. Um, and you actually said that you would give up your position. In light of that, what does this number mean? Does it mean the same thing? To be honest with you, right now, tonight, I still don't have an answer. I was asked that at the, the subcommittee meeting. Um, I kind of learned last year not to make any final decisions until you guys are all done with the budget. Um, I'm looking at different possibilities. One of the possibilities is not filling a current vacancy that we have now with the dispatchers. Um, I'm looking to see if there's other places that I can reduce my expenses, which might include shutting down part of our radio system. Um, not something I would want to do, but try to save some money. And um, we'll see where it goes. But like I said, we'll, we'll do the best we can with what, we, what, what, with what you give us. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Representative Pascalini. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Mr. Satry, on one of the, um, on your budget item 5220, 70,000 for utilities, fuel, and mileage. Mm -hmm. I understand the utilities, but I don't, I don't understand yeah. the fuel and the mileage. It's a I, category. There's, there's. I think the dispatchers no don't have fuel. motor chairs, right? Yeah, no, there's, it's utilities. It, it, the category is utilities, fuel, but there's no fuel there. You know, it's just a finance category. It's it's utilities. It's phone bills. It's electric bills. <coughs> utilities. Okay. I don't make up the categories. That's somebody else does that. We now have 31 members. Representative Kent. I noticed the uh, tower lease fees are uh, 27k a year. Uh, when were those fees set? Who negotiated them? And uh, have any other carriers, such as T-Mobile or anyone else, approached you for uh, access to the towers? If I remember correctly, the last time they were renegotiated was about five years ago. Um, and that was renegotiated by the purchasing department. Uh, at the time, it would have been John Piacenza. Um, it was a substantial increase from AT&T and um, Verizon. Uh, if I had another tower, I'd love to have more customers, but the, uh, the large tower, uh, we're maxed out right now. When will these be coming up? They look like? Uh, probably another five years. <clears throat> Represent Brill. Yes, I'd like to move another number. $1,422,512. Representative Brill, would you like to give your rationale, please? Yes, as a uh, firefighter in this town, I believe a loss of a dispatcher and the cutting down of radios puts uh, a lot of our firefighters' lives in jeopardy. Also, the people who call 911 who rely on the dispatchers to send out the proper people. Uh, we, public safety, we didn't cut the police department. I can't see why we're here to cut the 911 dispatch center. Is there any additional discussion on the first amended figure of $1,422,512 for account 1014? Representative Wilson. Which, oh, by the way, requires 
This is above the council number requires a two-thirds vote, which is 21 members. Representative Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. You, I think you just answered my question because it is above the council's number. <coughs> Additional discussion. Representative Nault. Mr. Sastry, last year when we were talking about the desks, you mentioned that during a normal work day, you normally have four um, dispatchers on duty at any one time. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case? For the most part now, we're down to uh, three, sometimes four, but mostly three is a, is a typical staffing, say between um, six o'clock in the morning, 6 a.m. until about 2 a.m. from 2 a.m. To 6 a.m. we go down to 2. And that's with, oh, that would sorry. be with the one to be filled. Any further discussion on the first amended figure? We will do roll call vote. <coughs> For the first amended figure of $1,422,512 for account 1014, again, it takes two-thirds or 21 members to pass this number because it's above the town council number. When I call your name, please say yes, no, or abstention. Representative Adams? No. Bailey? No. Baker? No. Burrell? Yes. Bauer? No. Casper? Yes. Dean Shinbrot? No. Evans? No. Frickman? No. Gilly? No. Kent? No. Long, uh, oopsie. Laughlin? No. Marley? No. Massett? Yes. McCabe? No. McDermott? Yes. Merritt? Nault? No. Nugent? Yes. Aubrey? No. Parker? No. Pescolini? No. Powers? Yes. Sleeker Hassant? No. Irma Streeter? Yes. Jim Streeter? Yes. Swindell? Yes. Watrous? Wells? Yes. Newsom? No. You are there. See, I look like it's scratched out. <laughs> 29, 29, you're 29. Wilson? No. Okay. <laughs> he said no. So that's 19 now. Okay, so that's 12, yes. 19, no. And zero extensions. 12, yes, 19, no, zero extensions. Motion fails 12 to 19 to zero. Is there any discussion on the original figure of $1,382,809 for account 1014 emergency communications? You want to do roll call again? No. Seeing none, we'll vote by raising hands. All those in favor of $1,382,809 for account 1014, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions. Motion carries twenty seven to four to zero. Thank you. Our next count is count. 10910 Groton Long Point Police on page. That's what you want to do, right? Right. On, on page 
da, da, da. 216 of your big budget book. Mr. Moderator, I move $249,375. Motion to move and seconded for $249,375 for account 10910. Ground Long Point, please. Uh, Chairman Nall, can you please give your committee's rationale? Sure. So um, during the meeting, I explained uh, to the committee members, because uh, I had been to the town council's uh, meeting on this, this is the town council's number. Uh, they moved this number as a 5% cut off of the Groton Long Point police request. Um, Representative Marley asked if it would be a good idea to zero out the Grout Groton Long Point police. Um, I thought that that was a bad idea um, given the longstanding provision of money to the Groton Long Point police um, and noted that the number on the floor was less than the Groton Long Point police spent in 2016. A uh, vote was taken and it passed unanimously. Before we go any further, I would like to uh, introduce Representative Sini, who had been on the RTM and has been sworn back in in District 7. So thank you very much for coming back. Is there any discussion on $249,375 for the Grout Long Point Police? Yeah, I'd like to move a new number, and that number is um, 243,530. Uh, that number is at point zero point six. Second. I'm sorry. Is there a second? second. Motion has been second. moved and seconded. Go ahead, Chairman Holt. Um, that represents a 0.6% uh, cut um, from last year's adjusted budget for Groton Long Point Police of 245,000. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is because the town police, um, which we voted on, I think, a week ago, or a week and a half ago, whatever, uh, were cut 0.6%. So it's just a, uh, it's just, uh, my feeling is now that we've cut the city police and we've cut the town police, we ought to at least cut the Groton Long Point police by an amount um, uh, comparable to the town police. Sir, would you like to introduce yourself for the record, please? Hi, my name is Mike Flynn. I'm president of the Grot Long Point Association. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Um, Grot Long Point actually puts in a request for a very small amount, actually, of their cost of the police force that we have at the point. Um, the cost, actually, that we ask for is about 37% of our budget, um, even though, actually, there's a, and we appreciate the opportunity to work with the town and the city, and especially the town, um, a cut like that takes a lot bigger hit to Grout Long Point because we're not funded the same way the town and the city is. We actually have a smaller funding actually from the um, council and the regional RTM. So at a cut of 6% on a percentage of 37 or 36 point something percent of our budget basically escalates it actually dramatically. So even though it doesn't seem like that much in the money factor at that point, it is a very large impact on Grout Long Point for that part. And thank you. <coughs> Any additional discussion? Representative Merritt. I don't think I'm going to vote for the uh, 243,000. I can't see the cut like that because I just can't see the comparisons that are being made offered up as rationale for the cut. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we will vote on the first amended figure of $243,530 for account 10910. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed?
Any abstentions? Wait, uh, did you? My hand was up, but apparently she couldn't see. I didn't see it. Okay, okay. Did you say you were down for the count? Yes. So that's 13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was 13 opposed. Mm -hmm. Motion passes 18 to 13 to zero. Next account is account 10911, highway maintenance, on page 216 of your budget. Mr. Moderator, I move 169,000. Eight hundred and thirteen dollars. Should be uh, second. Is second? Parker. Okay. Motion has been moved and seconded for one hundred sixty-nine thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars for count one zero nine one one, Grant Long Point Highway Maintenance. At the meeting, I asked the town manager um, if it was correct that the RTM was not allowed to uh, change this amount, and the town manager explained that by agreement, indeed, the RTM cannot modify this number. Uh, so there was no further discussion, and the number passed unanimously in the committee. Mr. Manager, is there anything you wish to add to that? And both with the Groton Long Point and the City Highway number, um, those the final determination is between is made by the Town Council. Um, the RTM, though, needs to approve the number um, because it does say in the charter that all appropriations. Uh, that are made on behalf of the town have to be approved by by the RTM. So once again, it's my least favorite thing to say that you you, you can't change something, but you have to vote on it. Um, but we, we've had town attorney opinions in the past that, that have indicated it's the council that determines the highway number for the city in Grant Long Point, but the RTM, because of the charter, needs to approve that number. Thank you, sir. Is there any other discussion on this figure? Seeing none, we will vote on the number of $169,813 for account 10911, Grant Long Point Highway Maintenance. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Burrell and, Mar Burrell and Marley. Abstentions? Obrey. 28 in favor. Motion carries. 28 to 2 to 1. Next account. Thank you, Chairman Nolte. Next account is going to be... Screen lighting. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. Account. <laughs> Count one zero. Oh, uh, Sorry. One zero. Nine yeah, again. <coughs> Account one zero oh nine one two. Street lighting on page two sixteen. Your budget book. Chairman Nault. Mr. Moderator, I move thirteen thousand four hundred and seventy six dollars. Motion is moved and seconded for $13,476 for account 10912. Ground Long Point Street Lighting. Discussion. This is a, it's basically a calculation of the rate that Groton Utilities charges times the number of lights and how much they're going to be on. Uh, there was some discussion about whether Groton Long Point would be shifting to LED street lights like the town. Um, and the Groton Long Point Association president noted that that decision was up to Groton Utilities and they didn't have a whole lot to say about it. Uh, after that, there was a vote and this number passed unanimously. 
Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote on the figure of $13,476 for account 10912, Grant Long Point Street Lighting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously, 3100. Next account is 1054, Health Services and Cultural Agencies. And first one we're going to do is 10543, Groton Ambulance, which is on page 210 in your budget book. Ambulance account 10543 was considered. You want to, can you before, can we just put a number up first? Fifty-two nine Motions are moved and seconded for fifty-two thousand nine hundred seventy-six dollars for account one hundred five four three Groton Ambulance. Uh, Steve Christina made a short presentation. He indicated that they had nearly 5,000 calls for service last year. Previous financial difficulties were mostly behind it, though, though there were still some discussions yet to come with the Attorney General. He indicated that 80 percent of their work was with Medicare people and 20 percent was with those who had insurance. They cannot bill for much of their service if, if it does not involve transportation to a facility. They're working with emergency training services to present a program of human trafficking May 10th, which I assume happened, so that people can better recognize the danger signals here. Representative Wilson asked if non-billable costs have improved. Non-emergency standbys are now usually billed should they be requested. Representative Adams asked if there was any way a better billing situation could be realized. And Mr. Christina indicated that Senator Summers has been helpful at the state level, but that nothing concrete has been realized from the legislature. A motion was made by Representative Hubbard for $52,976. This was seconded by Representative Burgos. A vote was unanimous in favor of this number. Any for, uh, actually, why don't you reckon, uh, introduce yourself rather for the record? My name is Steve Christina. I'm currently president of the Groton Ambulance Association. Is there any further discussion on this figure? Representative Massey. Um, Mr. Moderator, this is a question for Mr. Christina. Frequently, two ambulances show up, um, either with you all or and um, L and M, and I think I have this right. It all depends on what the nature of the call is, um, as to whether or not L and M shows up. My question is: Is it a question of? your staff not having the training to be able to do the things that the L&M folks do, or is it just because? Um, the staff at Groton Ambulance are um, certified at the emergency medical technician level. The um, L&M uh, Lawrence Memorial Paramedics, they're at the higher level of the paramedic, or uh, EM, emergency medical technician paramedic. When a call is received, the dispatch center um, determines who's going to respond. May it be just the ambulance, may it be the ambulance, the fire department, the ambulance, fire department, police, or everybody, including the paramedics. Uh, we have the option if we arrive on scene and determine that the patient's going to need more definitive care, we can request for the paramedics or maybe intercept with them. Okay, 
um, it, is it expensive for you to train a, a few people on your staff to be paramedics? The only reason that I'm asking is because I, I am asthmatic and fre not frequently, but a couple of times I've had to have an ambulance. Mm -hmm. Two ambulances show up. It's kind of like, you know what guys, I can't toss a coin. But I also get billed for two. Okay. So wouldn't it be better if your people were trained and more cost effective for those of us who have to pay for it. Okay. Um, the, the second ambulance might be another paramedic unit, which usually would come down out of knowledge if the two Groton, uh, the, the L and M paramedics were tied up, and that does happen frequently. Um, if that was the case, um, we don't bundle our bill with American Ambulance if that was the case where they were the paramedics that uh, arrived on scene. We do able to bundle bill with Lawrence Memorial Hospital. So you should, you know, see one bill, but it would include, our bill would include to the insurance company the paramedic charge. So I'm not, I'm not sure of the particular call that you may be talking about. Now, as for us becoming a paramedic service, the answer to that happened is slim to none. All right. Um, number one, we need to approach the Department of Health. We would need to uh, change of uh, statute from a, a basic service to a paramedic service, which would mean getting the local services, uh, many of the other paramedic services, all to agree to it. Um, personally, I think if Groton came up to a paramedic service, you'd be basically taking the, the paramedic service out of Lawrence Memorial and putting them right out of business because their high, one of the higher call volumes is Groton and then Nwanda. And of course, the L&M would have the final say if they approve it to go to the Department of Health. And I don't think that would ever happen. Okay, thank you. Additional discussion? 30 in the house right now. Oh, Marley has it. Represent Marley. Thank you. I was at the town council meeting uh, uh, regarding this particular uh, line item. And my thoughts basically mirror uh, those of Councillor Nultz. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not a 5013C, correct? We are a 501C3 organization. Oh, you are? Yes, sir. My understanding was that you were not. You were a private. No, we're, uh, we're with the IRS, we're a 501C3 organization. We've been that way since 1954. Okay. Well, Councillor Nult, uh, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but you felt that uh, this number should be zero. Um, one thing that I see personally is the bills that come out of your services, and they are extremely high. Um, not only that, but we provide the land and the building that you operate out of, correct, on Route 117? That's correct. We rent it from you. And you pay approximately $1 in tax a year? A well, rental fee. That's correct. Okay. I'd like to move a new number of zero. Thank you. Is there a second? second. Motion to move and seconded for the first minute figure of zero for account 10543, Grand Ambulance. Council Null. I originally had moved zero, but then after we closer to talk to um, them about the not being able to charge for their fees I changed my mind on that position and I don't know maybe Cindy has the vote but I don't recall what number I voted for Representative Marley in, in light of this new information do you want to rescind your motion no. okay Representative Casper uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just have one question. What is your rationale for zero? I mean, you were trying to, you seem to be going at that they're a private company, but then you found out they're 501C, so that argument disappeared. But what is your rationale for cutting it to zero? <laughs> uh, 
yes, thank you, uh, Representative Casper. Uh, I proceeded to state that their fees are extremely high, in my opinion, uh, from what I see on a daily basis as a personal injury attorney, uh, but also that they remain on town property and in a town building for basically free. That was my rationale. I remind the, the body that they're supposed to direct their marks, remarks through me and not to each other. Any additional discussion? Representative Obrey. Well, I wouldn't want to be the one to call and there's nobody there. So I would ask everybody to ignore that zero vote. Uh, this is a very important service that we have here in Groton, and thankfully we have it. I mean, in the, over in the other part of Groton, there's no longer any ambulance service and makes you a little nervous at times. Uh, we do have backup, I think, from maybe EB and maybe some from Pfizer in that area, but we don't certainly have the facility that's here. And so I'm very thankful they're there. I know they do a great job. Unfortunately, I've had to use their services. And um, I think it would be uh, a real disservice to what we're supposed to be here for to do a vote of a zero. Thank you very much. Additional discussion on the First Amendment figure of zero. Representative McDermott. Steve, most of your people that you pick up here are almost exclusively from Groton, aren't they? That's correct. Uh, the majority of our patients we transfer are from uh, transport are from Groton. Um, to answer a question about the fees being high, the state of Connecticut sets our ambulance rate. That doesn't mean that's what we can bill according to the insurance regulations. Um, as I stated to the subcommittee earlier, this uh, was that 80% of our payer mix comes from uh, Medicare, Medicaid, or Tricare. If at any point, and it came close just a little while ago, where the federal government goes into sequester, we will not be receiving any insurance payments. If that's 80% of the services revenue is coming in, and even if we go two or three or even longer without receiving that revenue, we're done. On a note, just so you realize that EMS is changing, and it's changing fast. One ambulance service a day is going out of business in the United States. That's how um, it's gotten to be. Representative Pascalini. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Steve, I'd, I'd like to say as being part of the committee for a number of years, um, this is a fi over a 50% cut of what you've had regularly. And since you became a president and looking at what you've done, and uh, the statistics and operating at half at what the town has supplied back to you. You've done a great job. Thank uh, you. I appreciate it keeping it down. Representative Wilson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, too, can't support the zero, but for other reasons. But I do have a question that I'm kind of concerned with uh, that Representative Obrey brought up. What part of town is not being covered by an ambulance? That's not for Mr. Christina, Mr. Moderator. Informed the reason I say that is because Groton Ambulance covers all of Groton. Right. So what part of Groton is not being covered by an ambulance is, was the statement that was made, and I would just like to know what the, what the answer is. Mr. Christina, what part of town? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, Groton Ambulance covers two-thirds of the town of Groton. So basically, um, from basically the intersection of Flanders Road, we take everything to the Thames River. Um, now, we may not have an ambulance physically uh, housed in the city of Groton, all right? But we respond off of the building at 117. That's where you have what uh, we call a multi-tiered response. That's the way the fire department's doing the first response. Um, there's far more ambulance calls than fire calls throughout the United States. But if we're tied up and we can't respond because we're coming from the hospital, there's going to be a delay in our response, then the fire departments would go. So there's really no breakdown 
in the care given to the personnel. All right, it just be time for the ambulance to get on scene. Thank you, Mr. Christina. Mr. Moderator, I do understand what the primary service areas are. I just was not happy with the statement that was made earlier by another representative that there was a part, part of the town that was not being covered. That's all I wanted to point out. Thank you. Representative O'Brien. I assume he's referring to me. Uh, I didn't, I'm sorry I didn't say it correctly. It takes a little longer to get there. We used to have an ambulance on, this is the Greater Groton. Okay, I'm not looking at any divisions here. I'm looking at the Greater Groton. We used to have an ambulance on either side of Groton at one time. Do you remember that, Mark? I do. Not, no. I do. Actually, it was, it was on Pleasant Street where we had a building. Thank you. It was you. the old uh, Groton Utilities building. God, I know you're older than me, Mark. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But all I was making was the comment that we do not any longer have that, and it is a longer response time. I have no complaint with their response. They're great, they do a great job, but things have changed, and they're ha handling a bigger area. And so I want them to be able to do that. And you should, too. <laughs> Mr. Christine, what is it? What is the cause of, you said one ambulance service a day goes out of business across the United States. What's causing that? Uh, it's mostly the decline in uh, funding from the uh, Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE. Because Uber's taking it. So, um, you know, the states just, mm -hmm. due to the financial constraints of the states, they just get to a point where we can't do it anymore. So. Uber. Is there any? <laughs> Is there any other discussion on the figure of zero? Representative Casper. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, I just have one question. Is there any reason your bills would be higher than another? I mean, you stated that it's set by the state and, and, you're, and actually what you bill is set by Medicare or Medicaid. Is That's there any reason your bills would be higher than some other service? No, it's basically all certified ambulances in the state are at the same rate. Um, if I was to apply for a rate increase, um, they may give me, let's say they give me a 4% increase. That looks good on paper, but the insurance companies, we have an agreement with the insurance companies at a particular rate. So no matter what we could charge, the insurance company is only going to pay X amount. I guess, what, what about people who don't have insurance? What rate do they pay? Um, if they don't have insurance, um, a, lot of, a lot of patients, well, we have a lot of bad debt we have to write off, a lot of write-offs write that we have to do. Um, our bad debt is unbelievable, you know, what we have to write off. Representative Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I think it's pretty obvious that health insurance has increased, and I guess it couldn't be just only Obamacare that caused it. But uh, that's, that's all we have to contend with. I request to move the question. Second. Motion's been made and second to move the question. That requires a two-thirds vote, which is? Second. Power second? Power second. Oh. All right, 31 <laughs> still right. Surprise. Somebody. Requires 21 members. All those in favor of moving the question and going directly voting on the number of zero for account 10543, Groton Ambulance, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? No. Passes Motion passes 27 three, four, four to zero. Four. We will now vote on the number of zero for count 10543 Groton Ambulance. All those in favor of the figure of zero, please say aye. Opposed? 
Abstentions? No. Motion fails one to twenty eight to two. Okay. Is there any discussion on the main motion of fifty two thousand nine hundred and seventy six dollars for account one oh five four three Brown Ambulance? Representative Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I think that the point of clarification when it came to billing, the ambulances bill whatever the ambulances are allowed to bill, but because of the bundle billing agreements you have with Lawrence Memorial that other items can be put on your bill that makes it look like you're charging it, correct? That's correct. Thank you. It's the bundle bill program that uh, we have with Lawrence Memorial. And most other services have that agreement with the uh, paramedics. Thank you. Any further discussion on this account? Representative Wells. I just want to follow up on a, a question earlier uh, about how you bill people who uh, don't have insurance. Do you charge them the rate the, that the insurance company would would reimburse, or is, do you pay them a higher higher rate? Do you bill them at a higher rate? Um, we would bill them at the rate that the state of Connecticut set for us, um, which in turn would be that you know we know that we probably wouldn't be getting payment on it anyway, so we would be writing that off. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we will vote on the figure of $52,976 for account 10543, Groton Ambulance. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Marley. Marley. Abstentions? No. Motion carries 29 1 to 1. Next account, 10548, Mystic River Ambulance. One zero five four eight Mystic River Ambulance. Chris Clarkin and their new president Mike Gilman, who was also a town employee, were present. You want to give us? Can you, can you please give us a number first. What's that? Give oh. us a Motion has been moved and seconded for $25,000 for account 10548, Mystic River Ambulance. Go ahead. Mr. Clark had indicated that they were doing some renovations at their Sandy Hollow location and that they had 38 to 40 volunteers. They've taken delivery of a new ambulance costing $164,000 minus a new chassis, utilizing the old chassis, which saved a considerable amount. He indicated that half of their calls are in Groton and half in Stonington and that they have had fewer calls from Groton Ambulance by volume. He has asked both Stonington and Groton for 55000 We did not know that evening what Stonington provided, which you can tell us. Representative Wilson asked how they handled the cuts from last year. Mr. Clarkin indicated that budgeting for two regular ambulances and two smaller sprinter type vehicles should be helpful. In addition, they were considering billing for previous non-billable events and we're working on a process to perhaps gain more income from that. Representative Wilson was concerned about not fully funding ambulance services, and the chairman mentioned that the public-private aspects of the ambulance service was controversial and is one of the primary causes for not granting full fu funding. The motion was made by the chairman for $25,000. This was seconded by Representative Adams, and a vote in the affirmative was unanimous. Motion has been moved and seconded for twenty-five thousand dollars for account one hundred five four eight, Mr. River Ambulance. Sir, would you please introduce yourself. Yes, sir. My name is Chris Clark, and I'm currently the president of Mr. River Ambulance. Is there any further discussion on this account? Representative O'Bray. Did we find out what's coming from Stonington? Yes, ma'am. We did thirty-five thousand dollars. 
well, shoot me down, but I'll put another number on the floor of 35,000. <laughs> Blue because somehow. <laughs> there a second. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Oh. Motion's been moved and seconded for thirty-five thousand dollars for account one zero five four eight, Mystic River Ambulance. Is there any discussion on the First Amendment figure? Representative O'Reilly, would you again please provide a rationale? <laughs> a little help here. Um, I really have mixed emotions on it, I have to tell you, because I don't know enough about this. But um, I feel that there's been enough things with Stonington that we didn't pick up our half. So I guess that's kind of my rationale for it. Plus, I, I think they do a very good job. Um, I wish we could give more to Groton. But I, I think that. Uh, I'm not sure, but I would think the area that you're covering is a little bit larger. Than Groton Amulets is? Yeah. We cover about a third, they cover about two thirds of Groton, and then we have half of Stonington Ballpark, I think, give yeah. or take. Well, I guess I'm trying to make up for the bridge we didn't build. Thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion on the First Amendment figure? Representative Dean Shinbrot. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just was curious what your breakdown was that you bill on insurance, private insurance, Medicare, Medicaid. It's actually about the same as Groton Ambulances. It's uh, give or take about 80-20. So Medicare, Medicaid is about 80%, and then private insurance uh, is about 20%. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions on the first amendment figure? Seeing none, we will vote on the first amendment figure of $35,000 for account 10548, Mystic River Ambulance. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Newsom, Evans, Dean Shinbrock, Watrous, Adams, Bailey, Nault, Nugent, McDermott, Marley. Got you represented. Did I get it? Get an alt, right? Um, uh, yes. Yeah, Any abstentions? Abstentions. Motion fails 19, and we actually, we needed 21, right, because it's above the council number. I apologize, I should have said that before. So the motion fails 19 to 21 to zero. No, 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 19 to 12. 19 to 12, sorry. <laughs> so we will vote on main motion of $25,000 for account 10548. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Pascalini. Anybody else opposed? Abstentions. Abstentions. Motion carries 30 to 1 is 0. Thank you. We think we're going to do some public works, CIPs. Representative Dean Shiprock, you want to come forward and read your committee report, please?
CIP 6K, the golf course clubhouse. Right, but you're going to go ahead and read your whole committee report from, it was one night? Yeah, it was just one night. We had, I had read it. Do you want me to reread? You read it already? Yes. Okay, my apologies. That's okay. So we are on <coughs> CIP, CIP 6A. 6K. K, okay, right. Uh, golf course clubhouse. And the ma we have no discussion on this, really. Um, the manager had requested 30000 Council, uh, 30,000. That was the town council approved number in the manager's request. And a second. Was, uh, second. Motion moved and seconded for $30,000. Oh, I'm sorry. We passed this from. unanimously in committee. Is there any discussion on this account? 6K. Man. Representative O'Brien? I'm sorry. I seem to be the only one doing a lot of talking tonight. <laughs> Does this include the uh, clubhouse where the restaurant is? Correct. Uh, is there anything in your plans to improve the appearance a little bit? As you see in the rest of the, the capital improvement program, the, five, or the four or five years out, there are other items there uh, that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that will address some of those items to include uh, ADA issues that we have with the toilets and some of the other work. So it has been identified. It's just this year we're asking for funding just to do the asbestos abatement, which is the encapsulation of the crawl space. And it's where? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Oh. The rest of the capital improvement program, as you see on page 263, does, a, um, does list other projects that we have planned for the building that we would like funded, that, which includes uh, the toilet facilities, uh, getting them ADA compliant, Two uh, other areas of addressing the parking lots, uh, the improvements there, the HVAC systems, and of course some of the tiles on the porch area, the spike resistant tiles on the porch areas, but those are for further, uh, further years out. This year we're only asking for the abatement, $30,000 to abate, to abate the, the, um, the asbestos in a crawl space. Okay. Who's responsible for the front steps in that area when you're going in? Public Works. Will you be doing anything to like paint the deck or anything this year? No, there are no funds for that. Well, I think that's kind of a shame because you know it is a, a grotten-owned building and it looks pretty shabby as people are going into a, a nice restaurant and going to play golf. It doesn't uh, give you a very good first impression. <coughs> is there any other discussion on figure on the floor? Seeing none, we'll vote the amount of $30,000 for CIP, 6K, golf course facilities, clubhouse. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Motion carries 30 to 1 to 0. <coughs> next. next oh, I'm sorry, next oh. count is count 6L, leased buildings on page B69, your budget book. The manager request council approved and committee approved number was forty thousand. I'd like to move forty thousand. Forty thousand dollars was to repave the um, parking lot and I think it's part of the uh, the uh, Rosso Gardens next door, whatever the housing is next door to repave the parking lot and some of their roadway. We did we did put that off last year kind of promise to get it in. I also understand from Mr. Snyder that the roof is, for the ambulance building has gone up to bid. It does have a nice blue tarp on it presently. Not very nice. Is there any further discussion on the CIP? Representative O'Brien. I'm really trying to sit down but, and stay there, but things keep going through my mind. Uh, the, t the tarring, where is that going to be? In front of the building? Uh, no, it is the, uh, sh the driveway. It's called a shared driveway or the shared access into uh, not only the Groton Ambulance rear parking lot, but also oh. to the housing units there. We and own the land. We've got to right. maintain the driveway. I, I'm sorry. I misunderstood the item. <laughs> My apologies. Could I ask a quick question, though? As long as I'm up. 
<laughs> was there a question as to who was going to plow in front of the uh, uh, golf course uh, building in last year? Uh, that's been worked out with Parks and Rec. Uh, Public Works will remain plowing it. I do believe during our, the, the off hours and parks maintenance will plow, our golf course maintenance will work it on during the regular hours. So nothing has changed. Whatever we were, we were doing this year will, re, will remain for next year. Okay, but I think it didn't get done a couple of times this year. It's last winter. That's the first time I've heard of that. If it hasn't been done, it should be reported to me or my supervisors. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, Director Schneider. The leaking roof at the Groton Ambulance, how long has that been leaking? It was reported to us uh, on the last budget cycle. We received over 16 bids on a repair for that, and the $35,000 was appropriated. We'll, we'll cover the cost of the repair, or we'll, we'll cover the, the project to replace the roof and the rotting so soffits and some of the other t uh, texture 111 sides. So we will be awarding a bid probably in the next 45 days. Is there any internal damage? There has been internal damage, but it's the same thing. It's the occupants need to notify Public Works when something happens, not after it happens. So there's plenty of pictures of stained ceilings and everything else, but that's wonderful. That shows that there has been a stain uh, or has been a problem, not that uh, uh, we should come out there and look at it. I, I'm the landlord. I respond to complaints from numerous uh, buildings that we lease out to people. Uh, this was one where they were living in that condition, and I don't know why. But uh, there's a reporting process that uh, they have right now, and it's working really well. Any further discussion on the amount of $40,000 for CIP 6L? Representative Frickman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, quick question about the driveway. Is, it, is the driveway a danger right now, or is that something that could wait? Uh, like any asphalt pavement, it can wait, but it is an access to one of our senior housing areas. Uh, and also access to the rear where, where, the, where the ambulances drive around the building to get into the, the parking structures. It needs to be done. Can you kick the can down the road one more damn time? Absolutely. Should you? Positively not. I do have to say in all fairness that this came up last year and I cut it with the promise that we would do it this year. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote on the figure of $40,000 for CIP 6L leased buildings. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries 30 to 1, 0. CIP 6N fuel tank replacement on page B71 in your budget book. I'd like to move $45,000. Second. That was the town manager's request, the council approved number, and it passed unanimously in committee. And there was no discussion on it. <clears throat> Motion has been moved and seconded for $45,000 for account 6N fuel tank replacement. B71. Is there any discussion on this account? Yes, I have a question. Representative Ken. Uh, has there been any uh, non-destructive testing or any analysis of the tanks to determine if there's a uh, immediate problem? Uh, the, no. Uh, the current regulations that was quoted in the CAP that requires that the tanks to be removed after the warranty period, and these tanks are warranted for 30 years, this is my second go around with the tanks. Yes, I've been here that long. I won't be here for the, the second replacement. I know that. <laughs> you can go that way, but it's, you have to do all the non-destructive testing from the pressure testing to go dig down to the side of the tank to see if the cathodic protection, the thickness, and everything else. It just becomes cheaper to, to replace the tank. What we'll be looking at is whether the tank should be replaced underground or above ground tankage. You know, go with above ground series of convolved double wall tanks. Also, this is a good time to take a look at the whole refueling thing. So these have been in the ground 30 years. The regulations say it's warrant, 
once the warranty is up, it's either time to do all the non-destructive testing or everything else, which just runs into thousands and more dollars. And then what happens if you find that something's failed? The tank immediately goes out of service. It's red tagged, red flagged, it's out. You pump it dry. Any additional discussion on account? CIP 6N, fuel tank replacement. Seeing none, we'll vote on the amount of $40,000, $45,000. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously, 31 0 to 0. I think this is a good place to take a 10 minute break. So we will, re we will recess for 10 minutes. Gas conversion on page B83 of your budget book. I'd like to move 75,000. Second. That was the town manager requested number, town council approved, and it was also unanimously approved by the committee. We had no discussion on it. Representative Bailey kept us moving right along. Director Schneider, can you explain the CIP a little bit, please? Okay, this is under the, uh, the, the projects. What the department has done is identified uh, our major town buildings and what can be converted to natural gas, which of course is cheaper. And then the process of what we did use, my, my staff and I looked at it, is that we need to determine some sort of order, not some sort, we need to determine order for of the buildings and when they come. And there's a common theme here too. At the, first, the last project we had was the gas and diesel tanks are nearing the life. Of the, of the tanks, the expectancy, life expectancy of the tanks. So we, we were using the same thought process here. So the $75,000 will, will be for our ma vehicle maintenance, which is our highway garage. It was built in 1952. The, uh, so the boiler is uh, original, it's steam heat. That would be converted to uh, natural gas because uh, Eversource did install the gas main down Route 215 uh, in front of the town hall annex all the way down to our last building. What this will do, and the reason we picked this building, is that heating oil tank that uh, provides the heating oil for that boiler needs to be replaced in 2019. So this would be funds to do the design work to not only to take the tank out of the ground, but to design a new heating system, uh, piping, uh, radiators, um, uh, ventilators, the whole nine yards for the uh, highway garage. Is there any additional discussion on $75,000 for CIP 9A? Seeing we'll know, you know, seeing no, we'll vote on the amount of $75,000 for CIP 9A natural gas conversion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 29, one to one. Next account is CIP 10A, sewer line infrastructure repair on page B87 of your budget book. I'd like to move the number of $50,000. Second. It was the manager's number, the town council's number, and the committee's number. There was also no discussion. I'm sorry, what was the number? 50,000. Motion's been moved and seconded for $50,000 for CIP 10A, sewer line infrastructure. <coughs> Chairman Dean Chabrot, would you like to give your committee's rationale for that? There, um, it's good enough for the town council, it's good enough for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Please, does anybody else have any discussion? <laughs> Representative Nault. 
I'd just like to confirm that this does not impact the property tax mill rate. Is that correct? That's correct. Is there any additional discussion on the CIP before we vote? Seeing none, we'll vote on the amount of $50,000 for CIP 10A. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries unanimously 31 to 0 to 0. Next count is CIP 10B, pump stations on page B88 of your budget book. I'd like to move the number of $651,000. That's how we go through our meetings. <laughs> so I'm going to have Chairman Dean Shimbrock read the number out one more time because I didn't hear it. $651,000. Second. It's not that late. <laughs> and although we, we didn't really have a discussion on it, I'm sure Mr. Snyder could add to some detail to this. Director, can you please provide some input on this? So this particular project is to take care of basically uh, replacing the dated and uh, just wearing out, worn out equipment over at the Gravel Street Pump Station in downtown Mystic. So it's pretty much a major electrical rehab, rehabilitation. Uh, no upgrade, no updating, or it's just updating the equipment. Didn't we do something similar to this last year? We're actually doing it at, at the Pequonic Pump Station in this fiscal year. Yep. So we, uh, and as I recall from the discussion last year, some of the valves we're having to replace is because they haven't been cycled. Uh, that's uh, that's correct. That's within projects that we're already working on. So what are we doing differently so that we don't have to buy new valves because we're not doing periodic maintenance on those? We are now doing periodic maintenance. Um, we every month we go to a different pump station. We actually cycle everything and we do training on what to do if we had a failure at that pump station. Now. Thank you very much. And could you, can I trouble you to introduce yourself, please? For the uh, Chris Lund, uh, the assistant director. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on account CIP 10B? Seeing none, we'll vote. The amount of $651,000 for account CIP 10B. Pump stations, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously, 31-0-0. Next is CIP 10C, treatment facility on page B89 of your budget book. And I'd like to move the number of $668,000. This was the manager's number and the council number and ours unanimously also. Motion's been moved and seconded for $668,000 for CIP account 10C. Director Schneier, can you please uh, provide some, or Chris, so, uh, provide some input, please? So uh, within this are two different projects. One was uh, previously approved, and after going through the design process, the uh, we had quite a bit of scope creep um, and additional items that needed to be updated to do the existing work to the emergency generator. So we're asking for an additional 100 there. Um, the bulk of the project, or the bulk of the money, is 553,000 to improve the, man the, the way we manage the solids at the plant. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at putting in a new type of system that will reduce the amount of water that's currently in our sludge. Um, right now, we spend a lot of money just shipping mostly water out of the plant, so those will further reduce it. So what we anticipate is seeing, actually, in about eight to ten years, a, uh, a definite cost saving. So that's why we're looking at doing this as uh, an improvement to the process. And why is this required? This is not a requirement. This is uh, this would be an actual upgrade. So we're looking at a way of improving our method of handling our solids to reduce the cost of operations on an annual basis. So. Um, as I mentioned, we anticipate an eight-year payback, and after that, we'll be saving on an annual basis. Um, I guess from a requirement, actually, there is one concern from a requirement standpoint is right now we use incineration for 
final disposition of the solids. So we ship it out, goes to incinerator in Johnston. Um, throughout New England, there's been a decrease in the number of active incinerators due to the clean water regulations. So anything that we can do to reduce the loads on the incinerators is actually to our advantage, um, as are less of them being built and operated. In separating the emergency generator, emergency generator A from plant water cooling? That's correct. That's the uh, project that was approved last year, actually, yes, uh, previously approved that we uh, had a lot of scope creep during the design um, due to the age of the generator and also bringing things up to code. So we were asking for additional funding just to finish that project off. It's already designed and been bid, and been bid once, but uh, as you'll see, we needed a, a bit more money than what was previously allocated there. And this will be funded by user fees? That's correct. Is there any additional discussion? So this is this would be what, from the sewer use? That's right, from tanks. user fees. User fees. Any additional discussion on this account before we vote? Seeing none, we will vote on the amount of $668,000 for CIP 10C treatment facility. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass clean. Any obstructions? Extensions? Motion car carries 29 to 2 to 0. This concludes everything we had on our agenda for tonight. We're only at 9 o'clock. Representative Baker? Uh, is there any reason why we can't go on and do Thursdays? We can continue on with accounts. Um, what I need to ask first, is there anybody that's considering or thinking about reconsideration on an account for Thursday? Because if they're going to make notice tonight that they're reconsidering for Thursday, then we can't finish up completely until Thursday, and we'll be back here Thursday. So I want to ask right now, is there anybody who wants to give notice that they want to do reconsideration? Then we'll move on. Hmm? What are we doing? We're moving on. Nobody, there's no reconsideration. Okay. Are we going to continue? We're going to continue. Okay. So, Mr. Manager, of the accounts that are left over from, for Thursday, what order would you like to take them in? Okay, the next account is account 1077, contribution to other funds on page 199 of your budget board. Mr. Moderator, I move uh, $546,661. Motion has been moved and seconded for, for, for five hundred forty-six thousand six hundred sixty-one dollars for account one zero seven seven ten seventy-seven contribution to other funds. Mm -hmm. Chairman, can you please give the rationale for your committee's vote? Sure. So the town manager um, ex explained that this number um, is basically was cut in half by the town council um, due to the budget crisis or whatever you want to call it this year, and um, so the. After that, there wasn't much discussion. We voted seven to zero to zero to uh, pass the town council's number. Mr. Manager, would you like to add anything to that? Okay. Motion's been moved and seconded. 
for $546,661 for account 1077 contribution to other funds. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the amount of $546,661, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Aye. Motion carries 30 to 1 to 0. Next account is count 1075 on page 229 of your budget. Mr. Moderator, I move 448,000. Even. Second. Motion's been moved and seconded for $448,000 for account 1075, capital reserves and contributions. Committee discussion, please. Sure, so um, Cindy just gave, just gave me this number. This number is basically based on and is directly resultant from uh, the cuts and authorizations to CIPs that we made uh, over the course of our budget deliberations, those are all done now. So this number is basically, if I, if I understand it correctly, is basically what we're going to put into the fund so, so that we can actually pay for the CIPs that we've approved. And when the committee voted, there was a different number because the CIP numbers were different there, but we passed it unanimously. That number, the old number. But this is a new number. This is new number, which is based on CIPs as we voted on them. Is there any other discussion? By the way, we now have 32 members. Is there any other discussion <laughs> on this account before we vote? Seeing none, all those in favor of $448,000 for account 1075, capital reserve contributions, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously, 32 0 0. I'm going to ask you to say a few words about this, okay? <coughs> we, have, we had a person. Another. Right, Representative Cini's mix 32. No, what are you talking about? Oh, he just left. He didn't tell us. Okay, we're back to 31. He didn't tell us he left. Is that no. Back there, no, we have 31 members now. So the motion carries 31 0 0. Change that. Good night. Yeah. <coughs> Next count is count 5010, capital reserve. It's on page 232 of your budget book. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move $2,817,000 even. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded for $2,817,000 for account 5010 capital reserve. I'd actually like uh, the finance director to say a few words on this one because uh, I'm not sure I could explain it adequately. <laughs> uh, this number represents the total of all projects, both general fund and the water pollution control projects that have been approved by the RTM and the council. Does that make sense? And that includes the ones we just voted on? It does. Is there any other discussion on this account before we vote? Seeing none, all those in favor of $2,817,000 for account 5010, capital reserve, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Motion carries 31-0-0. Next account is account 1076, debt service, on page 236 of your budget book. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move four million five hundred and ten thousand five hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Is there a second? Second. Motion to move and seconded. Four million 
$510,538 for account 1076, debt service. Could, uh, could I trouble the finance director, please, to just explain that, that account? Sure. Um, the bulk of this budget covers the uh, long-term debt for principal and interest payments on debt that we have previously issued. <coughs> so what would, that, what would that include, for instance? Um, any general fund debt that we had issued? And Board of Education debt for prior school projects? Roads, roads streets, roads and streets. Thank you, Betsy. And when does, just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. um, when do we add the, the debt for the new school project? It's about, that's several years off, right? I think that was about 2024. But that would show up. Doesn't, I don't need it. It won't show it's up. several years from now. No, in the plan for the school projects, because it's such a major project, as we did with the first phase, we would issue um, short-term notes and then long-term as the, as the expenditures um, grow. Did you hear? Yeah. Sorry. I was speaking to him. Sorry about that. Um, as we did with the first school project, with the um, bond issue of that magnitude, we would issue short-term notes in the beginning until the expenditures reached a point where we would determine it would be time to do long-term bonds. So it would be a couple of years after the project started before we would issue long-term debt. Sure. And that would show up in this account? Yes, once the debt, um, once we actually issued the bonds, the principal and interest payments would be sh uh, added to the debt schedules. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there any other discussion on this account? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of four million five hundred ten thousand five hundred thirty-eight dollars for account ten seventy-six debt service. Please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Motion so carries. Motion, motion carries unanimously. Thirty-one zero zero. Last count, account ten seventy-four. At least. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Page number. I'm sorry, that's on page two forty two of your budget book. So this uh, was actually a little bit controversial in committee. Um, myself and Representative Marley expressed a strong desire to try and minimize the mill rate increase as much as possible. Um, by reducing this account, the town manager argued the dangers of not funding contingency sufficiently in light of some uh, contracts that are coming due in the next fiscal, fiscal year. And his best estimate was that we we're going to need this amount of money to um, fund that. Um, there was a vote three to two, three in, actually, I should, let me just go through the vote. Three were in favor, Representatives Powers, Quinn, and Gilly. Zero were opposed, and myself and Representative Marley abstained. Uh, I can't speak for Representative Marley, but as far as I'm concerned, um, I have no way of knowing whether that's accurate or not. We're just relying on the town manager, and I think maybe we have to do that, but I'm just not comfortable, especially since this is a significant increase over last year's amount. Um, so I'm not just don't feel informed enough to, to vote yes or no on this account. Mr. Manager, can you explain the increase? Well, I think there's, um, first of all, I should note that on page 242, you do kind of have a summary going back over the last couple of years and the that identifies the amount of money that was put in contingency and then in general terms, the amount of money that had to be taken out of contingency over those years to pay for things that came up. I, I think the big story, um, and it's been an, an evolving story over the last couple of years, is as budgets get tighter and tighter uh, because of reductions, 
uh, we have less ability to move money around from one department to another to pay for things that come up during the course of the year. And as the chairperson noted, um, the other item is we have, as noted in my um, budget narrative, a fair number of contracts uh, that have not been settled, um, <clears throat> that at some point they will get settled. Um, and we're going to need money to be able to pay for those uh, negotiated increases. Um, so, I, I, you know, you, you can, I'd rather have the money there um, and not tap into our fund balance. Um, uh, but that is the other alternative is if you wanted to cut this with the, with n probably knowing we're going to be tapping into fund balance. Um, I look at that from my perspective as a failure. Um, anytime we have to go into fund balance uh, when we knew something was going to be coming up or that we knew the potential that something was going to be coming up, that's why you have contingency. And if we don't need the contingent, contingency amount, it all just goes back to the general fund at the end of the year. Just a reminder for this year, I think at this point we're slated to probably end up with ten or twenty thousand dollars, ten, ten thousand left in uh, in contingency by the end of the year. What are the contracts we're expecting this year? I'm sorry. What are the contracts we're expecting this year? So if you go to page Roman numeral 19 in your budget, um, in that table, uh, the pending, um, G GMEA, uh, police, uh, steel workers, AFSCME, and non-union. And as you can see, for a number of those groups, um, it, it's not only for fiscal year 18, uh, but would probably also involve fiscal year 17 once these contracts get settled. Representative Powers. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Mark, quick question. Our bond rating with us going into the schools and the bonding, this balance, this fund balance, is, is there a necessity to carry this money forward so that we look how do we look with, with a zero in compared to this number? Well, the, general, the fund balance is different than contingency. We, we, our, our stated objective for fund balance is 7.75% of the entire budget. Because of budget reductions, ironically, that will be a smaller amount of money than what was proposed in your budget. 7.75% um, is a good three, three and a half percentage points below the average in our peer group. And the peer group are simply other communities that have our bond rating. So, you know, I think it's very important that we maintain that fund balance, particularly uh, in light of the fact we're going to be going to the bond markets, um, be they for bands, bond anticipation notes, uh, or for actual permanent financing. Um, I, I, I've, I've used I've said this in the past to other groups it's you know it's it's kind of like if you if you wanted to go get a mortgage for your home the more money you have in the bank the more willing and the better the terms are that the bank will give you if you wanted to take a mortgage or a loan out same things true in, in municipal finance um, so 7.75 it's better than where it was 10 15 years ago but we are we are way behind uh, our peer group so um, this is a good number then. It's an adequate number. The, I the should say. The 650 is our best guesstimate. Um, that does not include um, probably the full impact of negotiations. Um, it's a midpoint, possibly. I, I you know, I, and that we'll we'll have to find money in other locations uh, because of uh, you know leaving positions open or not filling them or whatever. But. It's, it's our best guesstimate as to what we think we need for next year. Thank and it's you. primarily up because of the contracts that I just noted and the fact that a number of them will be two years behind by the time uh, the next fiscal year comes. Thank you. Thank you.
Representative Pasquale. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I know, Mark, it, it, probably a philosophical difference between you and I on this. I just, I'm worrying that seeing the transfers year to year, I understand this account more to be for emergencies. We, do, we don't, we guesstimated how much snow we're going to have or what we're going to have. All of a sudden, we have blizzard after blizzard. Snow, uh, snow removal in the sand account empties out. We have money. Fuel, fuel skyrockets. We have money. It seems to be like we, some of the departments and account runs out or we need something, they know they have that money versus to where uh, the community I worked in when I was doing the budgets, what we would get from the council was find it in your budget. Figure out what project you're not doing. Cut down on the overtime. Every quarter you should be looking. It, it, it's almost relying back that there's still a pot here if I cut my budget lower, I do something more like a, a fallback versus for real emergencies. Um, you know, if something happens, like by charter, you can't order departments to freeze their budgets, to freeze. High. And to me, that's what CEOs and others are able to do versus we have this money still sitting here. So I don't, and then with negotiations, if I'm looking on the negotiation side, if you got the money, my side of negotiating is going to be, we want a 3% raise, you already got the money. What, what's the problem here? Why, why can't we get 3%? You have the money already set. You're, you're, who's going to get laid off? We have the money. So, I, I mean, I know it's philosophical. I think we've had this discussion before. It just keeps going up and up and up. Or I should say, it keeps increasing and it keeps decreasing more than having money left over to put toward the uh, general fund. If I, I'm not, I appreciate your comments, Rich, but I don't, um, I'm being, I'm hard pressed to think of items that, um, you know, truly weren't things that just came up. I mean, we had a charter revision costs um, that were not uh, provided for in the budget for this year, and, and there was a request for that. Uh, there were a couple of initiatives uh, or items brought to the council's attention, be it Heritage Park, Thames River Water Taxi and um, also the Connecticut uh, Next initiative where there were dollars. Uh, we did have a contract get settled this year where we had emergency communication telecommunicator, telecommunicator wages. Um, the recruitment of the town manager, um, that took some addition. So I'm not, you know, I have to remind the, the, uh, the RTM that last year, Town operations returned $1.2 million at the end of the year out of a $30 million budget. Um, I, I think we do a good job. I mean, it, that number maybe years ago was a little bit bigger some years, but as things get tighter, um, you know, we, we have no place else to turn for some of these things. And we also have in the charter, as some of you are aware, the, the, whole, print, the whole principle of fourth quarter transfer, so we can't ask for money to be transferred from one account to another account until the fourth quarter. And by the time we do that, it's, you'll be seeing that in June. Um, it, it, the, and then Cindy's having us all close down our, our books uh, in the middle of June. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, if there are expenses that get approved by the council and then the RTM and there isn't contingency there, then we are going into fund balance. Um, th there's no other alternative but to do that. I view that I would be derelict in my duties if I did not try to project with staff's assistance what we think we may need for contingency as a, because, as, as I said, I think tapping into fund balance unless it was a, you know, a catastrophic event, uh, it tells me that we're not planning and budgeting properly. And I think sets off, and also is kind of a warning to the bond rating agencies that, geez, you guys really have a handle on what you're doing. And probably most importantly, that's not directed at the RTM, that's directed at staff. But more importantly, we've gotten into the habit of bringing down our fund balance to our minimum number, 7.75. It's not like it's higher than that, and you can 
grab a couple hundred thousand dollars and still maintain your stated objective fund balance amount. We, part of the revenues that will be used to pay for next year's budget would be anything over that 7.75 amount. Uh, so it, we don't really, you know, to me, what, if you have to tap into your fund balance the way we do it, you, you, then you're out of sync with what your stated objective is. And that's not a good thing uh, to, for the bond rating agency. It's not, I don't want to suggest that it's catastrophic, but it's, it's, a, it's a warning flag. Are there any additional discussion on this account? Seeing none, we'll vote on the amount of $650,000 for account 1074 contingency. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries 29 to 1 to 1. Is there any other business? Representative Nault. Mr. Moderator, I move to reconsider the Groton City Police budget. Tonight. Okay. Motion has been made to reconsider the Groton City Police budget. Is there a second? Motion has been moved and seconded to reconsider the City of Groton Police budget. Discussion. Chairman Obrey. Uh, I'm requesting a caucus, please. Okay. I understand that that requires a two thirds vote to reconsider. To reconsider. Just to reconsider. <laughs> Democrats have requested a caucus. Uh, is 15 minutes enough? Mm -hmm. Then we're in recess for 15 minutes. Motion has been moved and seconded to reconsider account 1090, City of Groton Police. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Representative Nault. Yeah, the, my basic rationale is that um, the we cut the town police budget 0.6%, yep. and we cut the Groton City Police budget 2.61%. Um, those are pretty uh, different percentages. Uh, my preference would be to have the percentages at least within a percent of each other, somewhere in the same ballpark, which they are not now. Um, and just in the interest of full disclosure, I did tell the Groton City Mayor that if they were not in the same ballpark, I would move to reconsider. So that's part of the, my rationale for doing this. And uh, whatever happens, happens. Motion to reconsider requires 21 requires two thirds majority, which is 21 of the uh, members here. Is there any other discussion before we vote on, on the motion to reconsider account 1090, Groton City Police? Representative Baker. Just to make it clear, if we vote yes, it means we want to reconsider. If we vote no, it means we don't want to reconsider, right? Correct. Okay. Let's do a roll call vote. Yeah. We'll do a roll call vote. This is to reconsider. When I, call, City, please. Sorry. When I call your uh, name, would you please say yes, no, or abstain? Adams? No. Bailey? No. Baker? No. Burrell? No. Bauer? No. Casper? No. Dean Chinbrot? No. Evans? No. Frickman? No. That's not me. Gilly? No. Kent? No. Hmm. Massett? No. McCabe? No. McDermott? No. Merritt? No. Nault? Yes. Nugent? No. Obrey? No. Parker? No. Pasqualini? No. Powers? No. Sleeker Hersant? No. Irma Streeter? No. Jim Streeter? No. 
Uh, Swindell? No. Watrous? No. Wells? No. Wilson? No. Newsom? No. Sini? No. The motion to reconsider fails one to thirty with no abstentions. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I missed somebody. No. One to thirty. I have twenty-nine people. Hang on a second. I'm sorry. Oh, Jim Laughlin didn't vote. That's right. There you go. Jim Laughlin. No. Here we go. It's a principle. That's good. No, Jim didn't leave. Thirty. Sorry about that, Representative Laughlin. I know. I thought he was gone too. One. We're at 31. One to 30 to zero. The motion to reconsider fails one to 30 to zero. <laughs> Representative Pasquale. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this by second. <laughs> Before we vote, I just want to thank all of you for your time and effort. Uh, you make it very easy to be moderator. I'm very proud of you. Representative Obrey. I'd just like to take a moment to thank Mark. Uh, I think this will be the last budget we'll be going through with him. And uh, he's always given us good direction. He's always stayed calm, even with me. <laughs> and uh, so I appreciate all you've done, Mark. Thank you very much. Representative Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, uh, I can't. Uh, it overwhelms me, the leadership of all the town departments in the city and everybody in this room, the leadership that I witnessed through such a difficult time that this town really shows an example for the state of Connecticut. Thank you very much, everybody. Is there any other discussion before we vote to adjourn? <laughs> Representative Laughlin? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions. We are adjourned.